In this video here, we're going to take a look at exam revision for volumes of revolution. So for this video here, all we're going to do is take a look at three exam style questions for volumes of revolution. And as you can see, then this will cover the following topics. So we have volumes of revolution about the X axis, volumes of revolution about the Y axis, adding and subtracting volumes. And then finally here, modeling with volumes of revolution. Now, it is worth pointing out that this video here is for the first year material on volumes of revolution. If you are looking for a video on the second year material for volumes of revolution, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. So as always, then what I'd recommend here is that you pause the video, have a go at the questions as they appear, and double check that your solution matches what we get on the screen. So that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction. Let's get started here then with question one. So let's get started here then with question one. Now, straight away, we can see for question one here, we have this diagram and this diagram then shows the curve with this equation here. So y is equal to the square root of x minus two. Now the region R is bounded by the curve, bounded by the curve here, the x axis, the y axis and the line y equals four. Now I did forget to include it here on the initial diagram, for this shaded region here, this is the region R. So let's include it now. Okay. So the region is rotated through two pi radians about the y axis, and it asks us then to find the exact volume of the solid generated. So let's just get started then by writing down this equation here. So y is equal, y is equal then to the square root of x minus 2 here. Okay. So for this volume then that we're asked to find, so V here, the volume will be equal to pi times by the integral then. We go from A to B here, go from A to B. And in this case, because we're rotating about the Y axis here, we integrate X squared with respect to Y here. So X squared dy, okay? So we go back to this initial equation here, right? Y is equal to the square root of X minus two. And we need to integrate x squared here. So what we need to do then is rearrange this equation here and make x the subject. And then we can square it and we know what the integrand here will be. Okay. If we rearrange this here then and make x the subject, well, we start by squaring both sides here. So y squared is equal to x minus 2. Then we can add 2 to both sides here. So x is equal to y squared plus 2 here. Okay, like so. And then finally, let's square both sides here then to get x squared as we require for our integrand here. So x squared here then, nice and straightforward really. So we're going to get here then. So y squared times by y squared, we get y to the 4. We then do y squared times by 2, so we get 2y squared, but we also repeat that here in the middle. So basically all I'm doing here is just expanding double brackets, right? So 2y squared. Plus another 2y squared, we get 4y squared there, plus 4y squared. And then finally here, 2 times by 2, we get plus 4 there. Okay. So we now have everything that we need here then to find this volume. So v here, the volume is equal to pi times by the integral then. We go from a to b. So a in this case here. Well, nice and straightforward, just using our diagram here, you can see that the lower limit would be zero. So a zero here, and my upper limit then would be four. Okay, so again, just using the diagram, we go from zero to four here of x squared with respect to y. So x squared here is equal to this. We have y to the power of four plus four y squared plus four. Okay, and we're integrating here then with respect to y, so dy. Okay, so to evaluate this integral here then, nice and straightforward, we simply add 1 to the power and divide by the new power here. So in that case then, what we get here for v is pi times by, we get y to the 5 over 5, y to the 5 over 5. We then get 4y cubed over 3. 4y cubed over 3. And then finally here is 4 
that would just integrate to give us 4y there. So plus 4y. And then finally, don't forget the limits here of integration. So we go from 0 to 4 here. So to finish off then, all we need to do here is substitute in our limit. So we start with the upper limit and then we subtract the lower limit here of 0. So what do we get here then? So for v is equal to pi times by. So don't forget we start with the upper limit here. We've got 4 to the power of 5 over 5. That would give me 1024 over 5. We then have 4 y cubed over 3. So y in this case is my upper limit of 4. So 4 times 4 cubed over 3. So that would give me 256 over 3 plus 256 over 3. And then finally here, 4 times by 4, that would give us plus 16 there. Okay. And now we subtract the lower limit here. But in this case, nice and easy because when we substitute in the lower limit here, well, each term would evaluate to give us 0 here. We get 0 to the power of 5 over 5, which is 0. 4 times 0 cubed over 3. Again, that's 0. And then finally, 4 times by um, 0 here. Well, again, that would just give us 0, right? So in other words, we just subtract 0. We don't need to really write this down, but I am just going to do it here just so you can see what we've done then with the lower limit here. Like so. And then let's just simplify here and write this in its exact form here. So in that case, then, v is equal. So this is going to be pi times by. So we've got 1024 over 5 plus 256 over 3 plus 16. So obviously just put this into your calculator, right? We don't need to do this by hand. So in that case, then what we get here is pi times by, so we get 4,592 as my numerator, so 4,592 over 15 here, like so. And then we can write this here as 4,592 pi over 15 there. And there we have it. So that gives us the exact volume of the solid generated, and that gives us the solution there to question one. Moving on then, we now have question two here. So for question two, then we're told that the curve shown in the diagram below has this equation here. The finite region R is bounded by this curve and the x-axis in the region is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis to generate a solid of revolution. So we can see our diagram here. And it then says show that the exact volume of the solid generated is two pi over 15. So to get us started then, Let's just write down this equation here. So y is equal to x times by the square root of 1 minus x squared here. Okay. Now, because we're rotating about the x-axis here then, the volume that we need v is given as pi times by the integral then from a to b here of y squared dx here. Okay, so we integrate y squared with respect to x here. Now, given that we have y here, then we obviously need y squared. So to obtain y squared here, nice and straightforward, then we simply square both sides. So y squared here then will be given as, so we get x squared times by 1 minus x squared. So it's x squared times by 1 minus x squared. And then if we expand this out here, what we get well, x squared times by 1 is x squared. And then x squared times minus x squared, we get minus x to the power of 4 there. Okay. So in that case then, for our volume here, v, this is given as pi times by the integral. Now in terms of our limits here, nice and straightforward, we're going from 0 to 1 here. So my lower limit is 0, and my upper limit is 1. We then integrate y squared here, which as we've just obtained is x squared minus x to the 4. We have x squared minus x to the 4. And we integrate here then with respect to x, so dx there. Okay. And now to evaluate this integral here then, nice and straightforward, we simply add 1 to the power and we divide by the new power. So what we get then here is pi times by. So adding 1 to the power, dividing by the new power, we get x cubed over 3 
we get x cubed over 3 there, minus then x to the 5 over 5. Okay. And don't forget the limits here from 0 to 1. And now all we need to do here then is substitute in our limits. So don't forget we start with the upper limit and then we subtract the lower limit here. So we get pi times by. So I get 1 to the power of 3, so 1 cubed over 3. So it's going to be 1 over 3. We then have minus, so it's x to the power of 5 over 5. So x here is 1. We get minus 1 to the 5 over 5. So in other words, just minus 1 fifth here. And then for the lower limit here, well, we subtract this, right? But in this case, each term here would simply evaluate as 0. We get 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 to the 5 over 5 there. So we just subtract 0 here. Obviously, you don't need to include this minus 0 here. I am also just including it just to show um, my lower limit here. When we substitute that in, we get 0. Okay. So if we simplify this here, we get pi times pi. I've got 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 0. So obviously, We'll just ignore the minus zero, right? That has no effect on this calculation here. So let's just get this here over a common denominator. In that case, we get 5 over 15. We get 5 over 15 minus 3 over 15. So if we evaluate this here, then, well, this difference, right, would be 2 over 15. We get pi times by 2 over 15. And clearly, then, what I've got here is 2 pi over 15 as required there for the volume. Okay, so therefore v is equal to 2 pi over 15 as required. Okay, so shut that down. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to question two. So to finish with here, then let's just take a look now at the very last question here. So we have question three, right? And for question three, then. We have the region R, which is bounded by the curve with this equation here, the line 2y plus x equals 10, and the x-axis. And we can see all of that here on our diagram. So for the first part of this question here, part A, it just asks us to find the coordinates of A and B. So we can see here on the diagram then, so this point here, A, that is the point of intersection between the straight line here and this curve then. And then for the point B here, that is the point of intersection with the x-axis here and this straight line, right? So let's start then by finding the coordinates of A here. So this is for part A then. So for A here. So for A then. So as we've mentioned here, this is the point of intersection between the curve with this equation of y equals x squared and this straight line here with this equation of 2y plus x equals 10. So in that case then, if they're equal to each other here and y is equal to x squared, all we need to do here now is substitute this into this equation here. That would be the easiest way to answer this question, right? So in that case, then, what I get here is two lots of x squared, so 2x squared. We then have plus x, and that is equal to 10. And as we said, that is equal to 10 here. So now we want to attempt to solve this quadratic here. So we're going to start by subtracting 10 off both sides. So we can set it equal to 0. So in that case, then we get 2x squared plus x minus 10. And this is all equal to 0 here. Okay. And now what we want to do here is attempt to factorize this quadratic, right? If we can factorize this, then we can easily obtain the solutions here. And in this case, this does indeed factorize. What we get here then is double brackets. We get 2x plus 5. So 2x plus 5. And then for the second bracket here, we get x minus 2. Okay. And this is equal to 0. Now, clearly, this x coordinate here, this solution then for the point A, the x coordinate here would be positive. So it won't be this solution here, right? So we just omit this solution here. And in that case, then we find that x is equal to 2 here. Okay. So the x coordinate here then for the point A is 2. I don't forget we also need the respective y coordinate here. Well, if y is equal to x squared then, then in that case, y is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. So when x is 2, y is 4 there. So in that case then, the point A here has coordinates of 2, 4, like so. And now let's find the coordinates of B here. 
So if I'll be then. Okay, so if I'll be here. Well, that would be the point of intersection here between the straight line with this equation of 2i plus x equals 10 and the x axis, right? So when the straight line here with this equation intersects with the x axis here, that is when y equals 0. So when y equals 0 here, when y equals 0, in that case then, we get two lots of 0. We get 2 times 0 plus x equals 10. Okay. Well, clearly 2 times 0 is just 0. In that case then, we find that x is equal to 10. And that gives us the coordinates of b then. Let's just write them down here. So b will have coordinates of 10, 0 there. Okay. So there we have it. That gives us the solution to part a. Now for part b then, we have a little bit more work involved here. So what I'm going to do just before we move on to part b here is just quickly clear the screen and then we can answer part b here. So we've cleared the screen, now let's have a go then at answering part B here. So we're told that a solid is created by rotating the region R through two pi radians about the x-axis. And for part B then, it just asks us to find the volume of the solid. Now, as soon as you see something like this problem here then, where we have this curve for example, and we have this straight line here and they intersect at a single point like this here, then you need to be thinking about either adding or subtracting volumes here to find the volume of this region R. So to do that, what we're going to do then is put the region R here into two separate regions. So if we go down from the point A here, like so, then what I get here is two separate regions. And let's shade these in different colors here. So I've got my first region then, that's this region here. And obviously we can find the volume of this region here, which we'll call V1. That's my first volume. And if we do the second region here, in blue, we also have this region here. And again, we can find the volume of this separate region here. Okay, and we'll call this V2. Okay, so the volume then of the region R, once we rotate this through two pi radians about the x axis here, we can denote this as V subscript R. So for part B, then we have V subscript R here. And that is equal then to V1 plus V2, right? So V1 plus v2. Okay, so let's start then by finding v1 here and let's do it in the same color just to keep it consistent. So for v1 here, how do we find this volume? Well, if we think about this for a moment then, well v1 will simply be pi times by the integral then. So in terms of limits here, well don't forget we're going from this point here to this point here, which we do know this point, right? Because that's linked to the coordinates of A here. So A, in case you didn't write these down as we answered part A then, the coordinates of A are 2, 4, like so. We'll also need the coordinates of B as well, so they were 10, 0, okay? So in that case, then we're going from 0 to 2 here, okay? So my limits are 0 to 2, like so. And because we're rotating about the x-axis here, we integrate y squared with respect to x here. Okay, so if y is equal to x squared here, then y squared is simply x squared squared, right? In that case, then we get x to the 4 here, like so. So we have pi times by the integral from 0 2 of y squared, which is x to the 4. We have x to the 4 there, and we're integrating with respect to x here, so dx. Okay, so this integral here then should be hopefully nice and straightforward, just basic A level mass integration, right? So we have pi times by. So what I get then is x to the 5 over 5. We just add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, right? So we get x to the 5 over 5, and don't forget the limits here then from 0 to, so from 0 to 2, like so, and now if we substitute in our limits here, we start with the upper limit and we subtract the lower limit here, so in that case then, we get pi times by, 
So 2 to the 5 over 5. So it give me 32 over 5 there. And then we subtract here 0 to the 5 over 5, which would just clearly be 0, right? So 32 over 5 minus 0 here, which in that case then just simply gives us 32 um, pi here. 32 pi over 5 there. Okay. So now what we need to do here is also find the volume of the second region here, which we've denoted as V2, right? So again, let's get the same pen color here to keep it consistent. So for V2 then, so for V2 here, in that case, well, this is actually quite straightforward because we can easily find this volume here by considering using the volume of a cone. So use the formula then, so use the volume of a cone. So why can we use the formula then for the volume of a cone? Well, let's just think about this problem here, right? We're rotating about the x-axis here. So I actually form a cone here, okay? Like so, okay? So this is my radius here because we're rotating about the x-axis, right? So what I've actually got here, if I was to kind of sketch this in like so, I get this cone here, okay? It's not perfect, but I get something that would look like this, right? And we're kind of looking at it from a funny angle. Obviously, this should be kind of curved as well, right? This is my cone here, okay? So from here to here, this is my radius, which would simply be this length here, right? So that is a height of four. So my radius is four. So R equals four. And then this here, this is H. So H in this case here. Well, that's going to be 10 minus two here because this point is 10. This point here is two. So 10 minus two, we get H equals eight here. Okay. So for the volume of a cone then, so for V2 here, this is equal then to a third of pi r squared h. Okay, so in that case, we get a third of pi times by r squared. So r here is 4, so we times that by 4 squared. So 4 squared, and then we times this by h here, which is 8. Okay, like so. So if we simplify this here, then what do we get? So 16 times by a times it by pi, and then we divide by three. So altogether here, then what I get is 128 pi, 128 pi over three there. Okay. So in that case, then let's go back to the original pen color here. So therefore, we kind of link these both here to our conclusion. In that case, then, for V subscripts R here. So for V subscripts R here, that will be equal then as we've well, basically noted down here, that is equal to V1 plus V2. Okay. Well, V1 is 32 pi over 5. So that's V1 here. Okay. I've changed the pen color, but it doesn't really matter. So 32 pi over 5. Like so. And then we have 128 pi over 3. So plus 128 pi over 3 there. Okay. It doesn't ask for it in exact form. Um, so it's up to you how you give the solution here. Whether you, you know, just give it as, um, or give it an exact form. Or whether you give it in its decimal equivalent. Either's fine here. But what I'll personally do here is give it an exact form. So to do that, we need to get this over a common denominator here. So in that case, we times 32 by, um, we times that by three, right? We need a common denominator of 15 here. So 32 times by three, I get 96 pi over 15. So 96 pi over 15. We then times this fraction here by five. So we get 640 pi. So 640 pi over 15. 15. And then if we simply add these together here, we'd get what 736 pi over 15 there. So 736 pi 
over 15 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us our solution there to the very last question here, question three. And that brings the end then of this video here on exam revision for volumes of revolution.